what's up Shred Squad? Today we're in London for a mega Shred Squad Science, space and a whole lot of things. First stop the science museum. Then we're hitting the legendary base 66 to put Newton's laws to the test. Scoot as well. Let's go! That's right. This Shredducation mission's packed with science, scooters and stoke. We're talking flight decks, Wonder Lab chaos, and a rocket show that nearly took my eyebrows off. Then we hit Bay 66, the gnarliest skate park in London. No brakes, no limits. So grab your helmet, charge your stoke levels, and prepare for launch. Here we go. The boys are in the heart of London, home of red buses, royalty, and ridiculously good museums. Also home of really confusing one-way systems. True story, I once got stuck on one for three days. Destination locked, the one and only London Science Museum. Yo Kev, how do I get my BMX up there? Same way you get your ideas, dangerously. First stop, the Energy Hall, showcasing the machines that power the Industrial Revolution. Frank's dialing up the past on the tablet. That's the Bolton and Watt engine from 1788. It helped power factories and changed the game for transport. Fuel stop. Even science explorers need snacks. Brownies confirmed, scientifically delicious. Frank found the wish you'd invented it scavenger hunt. I still think Velcro Crocs should have made the list. Velcro Crocs. Just wrong on so many levels, Kev. Space section was shut, but we did find a rocket longer than your Nan's sofa. That's a genuine US rocket hanging from the ceiling. Solid fuel, four stage satellite launch vehicle. Just imagine the booster power on that thing. Now, this is the Making the Modern World Gallery, full of game changers from the last 250 years. Check out the Mega Lighthouse lens. That's a Fresnel lens. It helped save lives at sea by focusing light super far. Bro, cars, on a wall, imagine parallel parking there. That's the infamous V2 rocket, the first long-range guided missile. Looks like Gru left it behind. Now, this one's future thinking. It's the prototype of the clock of the long now, designed to keep time for 10,000 years. 10,000? Built to remind us to think long term. Big decisions, big responsibility, big TikTok. Light deck route acquired. Wonder Lab and Aviation. Here we come. All the way to the top, time to burn off those brownies. Look at all these engines, man. If only you had one on your scooter cab, then you'd finally clear the box at the skate park. Huh, real funny, Dave. Did you spy that Spitfire? and an early biplane from the Wright Brothers era. Now we're getting old school, hot air balloon, floaty, but not very steering. Check this out. These early wings and propellers show how engineers learn to steer air itself. It's all about shape, lift, and balance. And here's a bold one, human flight attempt with strapped on wings. That's the warplanes cabinet. Check the full pilot kit, helmet, goggles, the lot. It's pretty dark in here, dad. Did you bring your night vision, Dave? That's the Pegasus engine, the one that lets the Harrier jet take off vertically. Crazy tech for 1980. Now this is wild. The whole inside of a plane sliced open. You get to see what's behind the panels, the wires, the seats, all the stuff squashed around you when you're flying. I don't know, Kev. I'm feeling like there was plenty of room for my extra carry-on. What's all that space above the cabin? That's yeah, for the ancillary systems. Cabin pressurization, air ducts, wiring. No room for your backup YouTube scooter and skateboard that you might finally get round to trying That's one day. All right, we just explored the flight section and saw some epic stuff. Spitfires, old school balloons, and an engine the size of my kitchen. We learned that wings make planes fly by pushing the air down, changing the flow. It's not just about speed, it's shape too. Now we're heading to the Wonder Lab. It's like a science playground with fog machines, magnets, static shocks and even a rocket show. Let's go blow some stuff up. Welcome to the Wonder Lab, where science gets hands-on and your brain might melt from all the epic stuff inside. Or in my case, Kev, where I press every button and hope for the best. These infinity boxes use mirrors and lights to create endless reflections, like falling into a science wormhole. Careful, boys. I looked into one once and came out three years older. This giant model shows how the sun, earth, and moon move in space. It's all about orbits and gravity. We're basically doing astronaut training on a merry-go-round. Hold tight, Frank. These let you feel sound. Low sounds push harder, high sounds barely tickle. That's vibration physics, baby. A mini earthquake in a box. Love it. That's the sound bite. It uses bone conduction. You bite down on the metal rod and the sound vibrates through your teeth and skull straight to your inner ear. So it's like a secret concert in your head? Exactly. It's how some hearing aids work too. The sound doesn't go through the air, it goes through you. Where's the one that plays Coach Kev's greatest hits? Actually, no, cancel that. I like my bones untraumatized. Dave, you wouldn't know real music if it hit you in the face with a treble clef. Says the guy who thinks elevator music slaps. This slope shows how you can shape and steer airflow. 
The fog lets you actually see it, just like air moving over a wing or through a rocket engine. So when I blow on it, I'm basically a human jet turbine? More like a slightly confused hairdryer. But yes, that's the idea. That's ferrofluid. Ferrofluid shows us magnetic fields. When you bring a magnet close, the tiny particles line up along the field lines. So you're seeing an invisible force made visible. Looks like something Missy Elliott would use for hair gel. These smoke cannons blast vortex rings, just like air jets from rocket nozzles. Mmm, smoky donut of science. This uses high-speed photography to snap a water drop mid-splash. Same tech used to capture footage of rocket fuel ignition. Drip, 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 boom to you fellas. The small dial lets you adjust the camera delay in milliseconds. These ropes mimic wave motion. Same idea behind how sound, light, and even radio signals travel. So I could technically surf a sound wave, right? No, Dave. No, you couldn't. Ah, the friction slides. Each slide has a different material. Metal, plastic, fabric, to show how friction affects speed. Silv goes fastest because he's powered by biscuits and adrenaline. Static electricity at work. The electrons build up and make your hair stand on end. Wow, that was real high voltage electricity, lightning. You would not want to touch that one. The lightning is so powerful, some escapes and travels through the surroundings and can even power things around you like this glow up shoe. That's why I wear Crocs, for safety. This wall is coated in photosensitive paint. When the flash goes off, your shadow sticks, just like film photography, but way more fun. All right, time for the rocket demo and we're blowing stuff up. Let's go. Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's how rockets launch. By pushing the ground, they push up. So basically, when I fall over at the skate park, I'm helping Earth stay in orbit? What the heck, Dave? No. All right, rocket knowledge secured. Now it's time to trade lab coats for helmets. But first, ice cream, the real fuel of champions. Thank you. Uh, Dave, buddy, I'm guessing you weren't trying to go for unicorn? Brother, I was just testing G-Force resilience while eating a 99. Didn't realize the ice cream had other plans. I mean, respect. That's a bold look. Half astronaut, half dessert menu. It's aerodynamic. Probably. You know, it's actually melting in there, right? Negative, Captain Kev. Helmet integrity's at 100%. Yeah, we'll see about that. No! Touchdown at Bay 66. London's best skate park built for serious senders. Powered by snacks, stoke, and probably a cheeky Red Bull. This place is next level. Ramps, bowls, rails, and that half pipe out back. Chef's kiss. Huge shout out to Felix, his bro, and the Bay 66 fam. It's a multi-generational shred zone, and they let us roll deep. Bay 66 is legendary, built under a railway line over 20 years of history and home to some massive UK comps. Yeah, pros have shredded here, and now so have Silv and Frank. Next up, Olympic pro. Silv warms up on the half pipe. <laughs> Look at that flow. Rocket science? Nah, this is rider science. Moving around that bowl like an air current around a Spitfire way. Smooth, sharp, and full set. And I'm gonna have to pull you on something there, Kev. The park is actually under the Westway flyover and next to the railway line, not under it. All right, Professor Precision, you wanna do the geography segment now too? There's a lot I have to do to prepare all the notes for us to commentate. A little appreciation would be nice. Lighten up a bit, dude. Here's my guy, Frank. He's come on so much. And these dudes can throw it down. We check in with them again later. The locals are out too. Cody lining up for a nose grind. Dude, if I were to try that, the only nose grinding would be the one on my face on the floor. Boom, locked in and rolled out. Yeah, on this occasion, I'd agree with you, Dave. Safety first. Even rocket launches don't go without safety prep. All right, quick quiz time. Here's one from the rocket show. What does Newton's third law say? A, rockets only fly if you count them down. B, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. C, gravity doesn't like to work at the weekend. D, space is made of jelly. That's commitment. And a 10 out of 10 on the rattometer. Sorry, man, got distracted there with Zach absolutely smashing that board slot. What did you say again? It was pretty rad, but I'm not repeating it, Dave. Just read it off the screen. You can read, right? Ooh, kitty got claws. I know you're trying to trick me with D because you know I like jelly, but it's A. I've seen enough launches to know that. Wrong, it's B. Launch fire shoots down, rocket shoots up. Time for the ultimate race. Scooter Kids versus an actual train? The rat race. Spoiler alert. The train's using Newton's second law and first class tickets. Newton's second law of motion? Basically, the bigger the push and the lighter the thing you're pushing, the faster it goes. Train wins, George comes flying in second, then Sylv and Frank chase the dust. Logan and Vincent turning it up. Check that traffic barrier launch. That ollie's all about friction. They drag their foot along the grip tape to help lift the board. Then the power slides stop. Logan turns the wheels sideways to stop them rolling. That boosts the friction and brings him to a stylish standstill. I use the power of friction too, Kev, mainly when I land on my face. 
To be fair, Dave, with the friction on that rough face of yours, you'd slow down real quick. Damn, you're gunning for me hard today, Kev. I know it's because you love me. Scoot. All right, it's time. The classic game of scoot. You take turns to set a trick, everyone tries to do it. If you mess up a trick, you get a letter. Last one standing wins. Nice. Hit me with another quick quiz, Kev. I want a shot at redemption after the jelly countdown trick. Silv goes big with a grizzly, and boom, everyone else takes a letter. All right, aviators in training. Let's see what you remember from the flight deck. What helps an aeroplane lift off the ground? A, giant springs under the runway. B, super strong fans under the seats. C, the shape of the wings creating lift. D, all the passengers flapping their arms. That manual gets tricky. Silv floats it, but the others stumble. Next up, George sets the spine. That's no joke. Takes serious courage, or in my case, knee pads and a life coach. Back to your quiz, Kev. What helps an airplane lift off the ground? I'm gonna have to say C, although it was a tough call with D. What did you put, Shred Squad? If you picked C, the shape of the wings creating lift like Dave, then you're right. Wings help planes fly by doing two clever things at once. First, they're curved on top, so the air moves faster there. That creates lower pressure above the wing. Second, as the air follows the curve of the wing, it changes direction, getting pushed downward. And thanks to Newton's law, and when air gets pushed down, the wing gets pushed up. That combo is what we call lift. Wow, you're so smart, Kev. That's us clear for takeoff. Catch you next time, Shred Squad. Okay, that's a wrap on another Shred Education mission. Big shout to Felix and the Bay 66 crew for letting us send it with the local Full legends, by the way. That part was unreal. We raced the train, learned about life and friction, and played the most savage game of school. Frank smashed it. Keep forgetting he's only six. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like, hit subscribe, and join us on our next adventure. Catch you next time. Stay steezy. Thank you so much for letting us ride and film in your park. We really appreciate all the time and effort that goes into keeping it so rad. So proud of you, Frank. Keep on shredding, dude. If you don't subscribe, Frank Scooter will turn into a banana. <gasps> if you don't subscribe, the escape park closes your alley. Seriously, guys, just hit that button. Or don't. Yeah, don't. Legend has it, your tail ropes get 10% faster if you do. So yeah, it's up to you. Just press it.